We're going to talk some Forex. We're going to talk some commodities. Folks, we're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report, folks, right under the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN. You can check out a couple great webinars he has under the services tab right there as well. And let's just jump right into it. Teddy Kegstat, uh, boy, where do we kick things off? Good to talk to you on Fed Day. Uh, well, yeah, it's the last Fed meeting of the year, so there's we can start with that if you'd like. Let's do it, man. What are you What are you looking for this afternoon? I know we just got some inflation data that ties into that a bit. Um, yeah, what are you looking for this afternoon from the Fed, the chairman, if anything? Uh, well, you know, are they are they going to start cutting? That I don't think is going to happen. Um, I don't even think the speech is going to go there either after the meeting. I probably nothing is going to happen today. It's most likely going to be a non-event. I still think there's a chance of them uh, raising a quarter point between this meeting and the next two meetings still, especially, you know, when you, we've been talking about this for since the last meeting that the consensus in the media is calling a, a bottom in the, uh, you know, in the bond market and the 10 year market and the yields are going to start retracting over the next year, you know, and I think that especially like on Monday, I heard that the consensus is now uh, a point and a quarter to a point and a half uh, easing over the next 12 months. Well, before you start saying that, you have to have them start to say that they're going to be dovish. You know, this is what they were talking about on Monday. And then yesterday you saw some economic numbers where inflation's ticking back up, you know, and, and this is something that if the Fed is going to stay firm on the stance that they've had for the last, you know, 14 to 16 months, uh, they're not done yet. You know, they haven't confirmed they're, that they're solid in being where they want to be to where they just flatten out. Now, just because they're pausing doesn't mean they're getting ready to go dovish. And I still think that it, it, maybe today is not the day, but if we still have some more economic numbers, especially if we have a soft holiday spending, uh, you know, uh, season, especially for the holidays, well, I can't see how sometime between now and the next two meetings that we're not going to get at least one more quarter point before they start to go on just the pausing, you know, zone. So we'll see what happens today. Very likely it's a non-event. You know, we've been wedging into the trade, you know, into today. So I would say for all of you FX traders, especially if you have a position, tighten up your stops and get ready for either a non-event. Or a head fake, you know, we could have, even if it's a non-event, we could still have the algos kick up and be kind of a crazy trade. So I would sure. it, I would be careful about entering any new positions. I would wait until at least tomorrow and see what kind of how the market settles down. And uh, I mean, we could have a complete flatline nowhere trade. You know, it's very likely that that's going to be the case today. So, but uh, yeah, I would say be very careful for the next day or so. I appreciate the analysis. And, and how does that when you think about that aspect of, the, aspect of things, the Fed, right, then my brain goes to next, like, you know, I'm looking at yields. I'm, of course, looking at the dollar. Um, do you take that and you're, you're looking for some guidance from the Fed, maybe, or where that goes? Or what do you think about yields? I mean, we're back to almost 4.15% on the 10-year right now. Dollar's been flirting with about 104-ish. Uh, but, boy, it's been quite a pullback. Where do you see that? You know, on the, on the I know you love the thirty year as well. I'm always looking mm -hmm. at the ten year. People love it. What do you think of four point one five percent right now on the ten year? Well, it's great that you're bringing that up. I'm actually watching the short terms more than the thirty year right now, and that's something I think you really have to watch is because they're, they're they're leading the charge right now as far as the retraction and yield. So I think that you have to watch that spread. You know, people they look at usually one the ten year is most watched by most of the people in the financial industry, um, but they never really look at the spreads between the thirty year and the ten year, or the ten year and the five year. And right now, I would watch that dynamic where I think that especially as we haven't had a confirmation on what the Fed is doing, that you're going to probably see some divergence in those markets, meaning that you'll probably see a, a, a raising, you know, a lowering uh, trade in the 10-year and the five-year um, that's going to be a little bit faster than the 30-year, I think, you know, so because we are coming to that buffering point, you know, where we know that they're, they're only going to hike so much if they do hike sure. at all, you know what I mean? So we are at, the, at that kind of, of a situation. So yeah, I would be watching the 10-year and the five-year more for direction right now as far as yields and watch them for a spiking movement, you know, where I think you could see them retracting a little bit higher yields um, in the short run as we head into the end of the year before we start to um, you start to really pull back and see a nice um, pullback in yields, meaning an easing on yields. You know, the market wants lower yields right now. That's obvious, you know, yeah. but we haven't gotten the fundamental yet confirmed. 
and we just had such a rip roaring rally in terms of higher price and lower yield. I was jumping around the mm-hmm. two year, the five year, even as you're talking. So, you know, a little bit of a maybe pullback in price, just uh, mm-hmm. of some of that move, not exactly indicative. Do you want to talk less. about the the end by any chance? <laughs> Let's do it for sure. You talk about moves, right? Let's do it. Yeah. So, uh, well, we know that last week there was definitely a very big move in the U.S. dollar yen. I think it what was it Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah, I think it was Wednesday last week. So um, the BOJ obviously is back on the move. What is going to be their future course? Well, I think what we we have definitely seen is that uh, they're going to be doing things in 2024. Now, does that mean they're going to be aggressive? You got to remember, being aggressive for the Japanese for the Bank of Japan means that they're actually just doing something, you know? <laughs> right? right? I mean, they sat they they sat on their hands for decades and didn't do a thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, remember, they had the changeover in leadership for the BOJ back in the spring. The new chairman over there, it seems like, uh, obviously, there's new leadership, new direction. Last week was a marker. And I think that, you know, we're trading around that key area of around a, of 150, 150 in the U.S. dollar-yen relationship. That's a key level for the BOJ. Now, let's say that we still do raise one more quarter point. That means that on a, on a price basis, we could maybe take out the highs and get the yen up to about maybe 155. But that would cap out that relationship if the Fed is truly pausing, not even that they're going to start cutting rates. And if they do actually go towards a dovish stance, well, then you're going to see the U.S. dollar yen come back down to the 120 level, you know, 110 level easily, you know, and that's without the BOJ doing something. So if they actually do something in tandem with us just pausing, let alone starting to pull back on rates, because then you're going to have a divergence in the banking, you know, they're going to be raising, we're going to be easing or are staying flat that will definitely weigh on the dollar in that currency relationship right there now is that going to be the same in other currencies not necessarily but i would expect to see that the new trend for 2024 u.s dollar yen traders may have some significant trends that they can actually capitalize on next year and it's going to be a divergence versus other currencies you know so it has nothing to do with what goes on with the european currencies or anything like that i think the dynamic of the u.s dollar yen trade in 2024 is going to be I think it might be one of the markets that but a year from now they're going to be looking back on 2024 and say this was the mover and I, I know we got some gold bugs that perk their ears <laughs> up as they hear that as well man Teddy I appreciate the time that was a quick nine minutes man I uh, look forward to talking to you next week uh, last one before Christmas have a great week man we'll talk to you next Wednesday thanks Tommy you guys take thanks, care thanks Teddy